Good morning. Welcome to day two of Hack in the Box. This is a wonderful hacker conference. This is my first time uh, here at Hack in the Box, and I've been having a great time. I hope you have as well. Um, the title of the presentation is The Bad Guys Are Winning, Now What? Okay. Um, did you see uh, Joe Grant's presentation yesterday morning? It's a fantastic talk. Uh, it, it really inspired me to get much more into the hardware side of things, because I'm a software network guy. But one of the things I liked most of his talk was his slash me. When he, when he started it up, you know, he just had a little slash me and then he had his bio. And I thought, wow, I want something like that, right? But I can't do the same thing because, well, that would be lame to do the same thing. So I was sitting there thinking this morning, how could I get a little bit of information about myself out of my computer? And I thought, well, inside of Etsy password, we have the GCOS field. Yeah. So what I could do is I could do a cut dash F5 to take the fifth column out of a dash D colon colon delimited file, Etsy password, to grab my GCOS field, pipe it through grep, and be case insensitive about this, because who knows if they're going to capitalize things or not. SCOTUS. So there's my bio. Anyway, anyway, um, I'm Ed Scotus. I've been doing information security work for over 13 years now. Um, I started working at Bellcor, Bell Communications Research, uh, back in the 90s, focused on how people hack into the phone companies. I remember when I got that job, I was thinking, wow, they're going to pay me to do penetration tests to actually hack the phone companies now. You see, I've been doing it for years for free, and now they're actually going to pay me to, to do it. So. Um, I worked on penetration testing of the phone companies, uh, incident response, <laughs> digital forensics. I'm also an instructor for the SANS Institute, where I teach classes on penetration testing and incident handling. I'm a co-founder of a company called InGuardians, which I, I founded with my friend Jay Beal. Many of you are probably familiar with Jay, uh, Mike Poor, uh, and several other folks on our team. Um, we do a lot of information security research and consulting. My particular areas of focus for research has been malware analysis, virtual machine security issues, including analyzing uh, whether virtual machines can be escaped. And in the last five years, starting in 2004, I've been doing a lot of consulting associated with cyber warfare uh, strategies and tactics. Uh, all of those things are brought together in what we're going to talk about today. I also write uh, for a blog called commandlinekungfu.com, which sort of the title of this slide is uh, reflective of. Um, we post once a week. It's me and Hal Pomerantz, and we essentially have kung fu sparring at the command line. It's a lot of fun. We don't make any money from it. We do it just because we enjoy it. But if you want to get into really twisted and sick command line stuff, that's the place you should go, command line kung fu. Um, I also uh, have a couple of books out that you might want to check out at some point. All right. So here's the flow of this presentation. We're going to start out with a central thesis, the state of the hack. Why are the bad guys winning? And really, are they winning? We're going to get that out of the way in about 10 or 15 minutes, because the majority of this talk is focused on the implications. If you accept, or at least are willing to entertain my thesis, we'll then talk about some of the things that it could imply. We'll start out for penetration testers. What does this mean for you to do your jobs or think about your jobs in a different fashion? We'll then talk about what it means for enterprise security professionals. So if your job is to defend a, a big company or big government network, we'll talk about what our thesis means for you. And then we'll finish off with a lively discussion of some of the military implications of uh, what this is all about. And then we'll open it up for Q&A at the end. All right. Now, this presentation is based on a struggle of mine over the last few years. Um, and a lot of this presentation, the ideas have been refined by having debates with a lot of my friends, pushing back and forth on each other over, over lots of sushi and, and some fine beers. Um, but a lot of this, this stuff that you're about to see here is based on arguments that I've had with people like H.D. Moore, uh, arguments that I've had with Mike Poor. Uh, you're familiar with Chris Hoff, absolutely brilliant fellow on the virtualization side of things. He vehemently opposed some of the stuff that I'm going to be talking to you about today. But this pushing back and forth amongst these guys has helped to, to really inform my ideas. Now, this is not a talk I could have given, well, two years ago. It's based on some mindsets that I've been driven to based on the way our industry is evolving and based on these arguments with these other guys, OK? It might be controversial. You may not agree with me. That's OK. I don't want you to be upset if you don't agree with me. That's OK. My goal here is not to convince you to my way of thought. No, no, no. My goal here is to get you thinking about things. You may come to a different conclusion. That's fine. But at least we, in the hacker community, need to start thinking about these things. The world is changing, and changing in a very fast way. It has huge implications for our jobs as pen testers, 
really big implications for what enterprises are going to do. And in fact, it's reworking the way militaries are going to fight battles. So we're going to analyze each of those three things. You don't have to agree with me, though. That's OK. All right, so here's the central thesis of the talk. Everything we're going to discuss for the next 55 minutes is hinged on this. A sufficiently determined and motivated, but not necessarily well-funded attacker can break into pretty much any organization. Okay, now this is a hacker conference. I hope that this just rings true to you. Uh, sometimes I have this discussion inside of enterprises or military organizations and they say, no, no, that's not true. But the fact is, it is, it is true, really. I mean, notice that I do have a little bit of a weasel word here. I say almost any modern organization. And you say, well, what does almost mean? I'll take whatever you give me, okay? 70%? Uh, is it okay if we say 70%? Okay, then let's go with that. 90%? I personally believe it's 90 or 95%. But as long as you give me 51%, I think we can, we can be okay here, right? Um, well, what do we mean by getting access to breaking in? I mean gaining control of critical systems within that organization, exfiltrating sensitive information, or otherwise undermining that organization's goals, okay? This is the central thesis of the talk. And, and, and what does this mean? It means the bad guys are winning. We here in the hacker community are the good guys. Who are the bad guys? The bad guys are, are cyber criminals and people who are, are doing things maliciously. We are here to, to learn and understand and explore technology. All right, so that's my thesis, okay? All right, we're going to now talk about why this is so. We're gonna spend about 10 minutes discussing the trends that have happened from a technological and social perspective that have allowed the bad guys to, well, start winning. We have a huge increase in our attack surface. If you saw the presentations from yesterday, many of them were talking about this increased attack surface. Uh, one of the issues is client-side exploitation. The dominant attack vector has shifted in the last four years from service-side exploits to client-side exploitation. Service-side exploits are still out there. MS-08067, the pen tester's best friend, right? The one that the configure worm used to spread, but we still find that on internal networks. It's been largely hunted to extinction on the internet because, well, there's so much configure activity out there. But uh, server-side exploits, yes, they still do occur, but browsers are, of course, dominant as the attack vector today. This is gonna have huge implications as we move into talking about what this means for us as pen testers. By browsers, I mean things like Internet Explorer, of course, Firefox, Safari. Safari is far less targeted, but it looks like it's just as vulnerable, if not more vulnerable, than some of these other browsers out there. But because its market share is still relatively low, it doesn't get exploited as often. But I believe it's just as vulnerable, perhaps even more vulnerable, some, than some of the other stuff. Document rendering programs, like uh, Adobe Acrobat Reader, Microsoft Word, which is not only a word processor, it's also a browser. Uh, Excel, media players like RealPlayer, Windows Media Player, and program execution environments. This is another very important one. Specifically, I'm referring to here the Java runtime environment, although there's others, Flash, for example. But the Java runtime environment is a particular problem because, well, patching is a solution to these things, right? Patching. But patching your JRE is difficult, especially in an enterprise environment, because you probably have some Java-based applications in your enterprise that depend on your internal users having an old version of Java. And if you upgrade to the latest version of the Java runtime environment, you'll actually break all your corporate apps. So your application development environment has required you to keep old versions of Java that are very exploitable. So that's one piece of the increased attack surface. Another one is wireless almost everywhere. We take it for granted, the explosion of wireless in our lives, such as Wi-Fi, or Bluetooth, or Zigbee, or various other wireless protocols. By the way, my colleague at InGuardians, Josh Wright, fantastic wireless researcher, he is uh, going to present in a couple of weeks at TourCon on a new set of programs he has built called Killer B. What is Killer B? Killer B is a Zigbee attack suite. You could almost think of it as um, what Aircrack NG is for Wi-Fi. Killer B will do that and a lot more for Zigbee. He's going to present on it in two weeks, talk about the different piece parts of it, and then we're going to release this tool, this whole suite of tools that can do injection of traffic, cracking of the rather weak Zigbee crypto and so forth. We're going to release it at ShmooCon. Okay, that'll be uh, early part of next year. You'll need an appropriate Zigbee dongle for it, but you can get those for about 40 bucks. Um, so be on the lookout for Killer B from Josh Wright. It's, it's really cool stuff. Uh, what are people using Zigbee for? They're using it for manufacturing automation. They're also using it in grocery stores. It's a significant attack vector, as is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. The other big increase in our attack surface